NPCT students. In this session, we will see how to get the correct answer for the most probable objective type questions in strength of material. So we will deal with simple stresses and strain problems. Modulus of rigidity is so here we have four options and the correct option is B shear stress divided by shear strain. So modulus of rigidity or shear modulus is the rate of change of unit shear stress with respect to unit shear strain. Okay, for this is for the condition of pure shear within the proportional. Uh, bulk modulus of elasticity is so we have four options here and the correct option is normal stress on each face of the cube divided by volumetric strain that is the definition of bulk modulus the bulk elastic property of a material determine how much it will compress under a given amount of external pressure. The ratio of the change in pressure to fractional volume compression is called bulk modulus of the material. Factor of safety is out of these options, the answer is C, ultimate stress divided by permissible stress. The ratio of structure's absolute strength that is structural capability to actual applied load. This is a measure of reliability of a particular design. Poison's ratio is so Poison's ratio is Lateral strain divided by longitudinal strain. Poisson's ratio is defined as the ratio of change in width per unit width of a material to change in its length per unit length as a result of strain. A rod 120 centimeter long and of diameter 3 cm is subjected to an axial pull of 18 kN. The stress in a Newton per millimeter square is. So in this problem, you have to look at the unit. So 120 cm and 3 cm, you have to convert that into millimeter because you have to get the answer in Newton per millimeter square. And 18 kilonewton has to be expressed in newton. Kilo is 10 raised to 3. So let us see the options. Out of these four options, the correct option is 25.47 D. Because 18 kilonewton is 18,000. That is the formula of stress load by area so load is 18,000 divided by area since it is a rod circular one so it is pi d square by 4 so pi 3.142 and d square 30 3 centimeter is equal to 30 millimeter each so 30 into 30 into 3.142 divided by 4 which is equal to 25.47 Newton per millimeter square. So here 120 centimeter length is not needed. Why? Because in stress formula we have load by area. In area we are not considering the length. Only we take the cross section area of the rod which is equal to pi d square by 4. The total extension in a bar consists of three bars of same material of varying section is. 
So here in these options, P is equal to load applied, E Young's modulus per the bar, L123 stands for length of the corresponding bars. A123 is corresponding to the areas of three bars. Now in this the correct answer is A because extension is equal to PL by AE. In only in the first option you can see P in the numerator whereas here in the denominator we have E into L1 divided by A1 right so when you take the L1 by A1 in the denominator then L1 goes to the numerator and this becomes PL by A so answer is A The relationship between the Young's modulus E, bulk modulus K and Poisson's ratio mu is given by. So answer is B. E is equal to 3 K into 1 minus 2 mu. The relationship between the Young's modulus E, modulus of rigidity C and bulk modulus K is given by. The answer is A. E is equal to 9 C K upon C plus 3K. The total extension of a taper rod of length L and end diameters T1 and T2 subjected to a load P is given by. So these are the options and the correct answer is A 4PL by 5E into T1 T2. Which of the following is not a basic type of strain? So, compressive strain, shear strain, area strain, and volume strain. So, the correct answer is area strain, which is not a basic type of strain. Hooke's law is applicable within elastic limit, plastic limit, fracture point, and ultimate strength and it is elastic limit as per the law stress is directly proportional to strain within elastic limit stress is Stress is external force, internal resistive force, axial force, radial force. It is internal resistive force. Therefore, it is the strength offered by surface against external loading. Following are the basic type of stress except tensile stress, compressive stress, shear stress. Polymetric stress. Answer is D. Polymetric stress. All these first three stresses, tensile stress, compressive stresses, and shear stress, are the basic type of stresses. Therefore, volumetric stress is exceptional. When tensile stress is applied axially on a central rod its diameter decreases length increases volume decreases which of the above are true so we have to select whether the answer only first answer is correct or only second answer is correct or third first and second answer both are correct or all of this are correct the answer is c that is diameter and decreases length increases both are correct volumetric strain is 
it is change in volume by original volume so answer is c center of gravity and moment of inertia shear force and bending moment a beam is a structural member which is subjected to axial tension or compression transverse loads and couples twisting moment or no load the answer is b transverse load and couples so here if you take this as a beam whose one end is fixed then whatever the load applied in a transverse direction okay then we call this as a beam so beam is a member which is subjected to transverse load a cantilever is a beam whose both ends are supported either on roller or hinges one end is fixed and the other end is free both ends are fixed or whose both or one of ends has overhang the answer is b one end is fixed and other end is free again here one end is fixed and other end is free so it is a cantilever b in a cantilever carrying a uniformly varying load starting from zero at free end the shear force diagram is the answer is c follows a parabolic law okay it will be a parabola in a cantilever carrying a uniformly varying load starting from zero at free end the bending moment diagram is so it is d follows a cubic law you can see here it is a cubic one bending moment guy is always cubic whereas shear force diagram it is parabolic in a simply supported beam bending moment at the end so out of these options the first one is correct is always zero if it does not carry couple at the end this is the condition for any part of the beam between two concentrated load shear force diagram is a answer is a it is horizontal straight line if there is no load in between two concentrated loads or point loads then shear force diagram will be a straight horizontal line for any part of the beam between two concentrated load shear force diagram is again horizontal straight line answer is a for any part of a beam between two concentrated loads the bending moment diagram is a answer is c line inclined to x axis for any part of the beam between two concentrated loads bending moment diagram is answer c line inclined to x axis for any part of a beam subjected to a uniformly distributed load shear force diagram is answer is c line inclined to x axis for any part of a beam subjected to a uniformly distributed load bending moment diagram is the answer is d it is parabola parabola see only uniformly distributed load so i'm talking about this portion this is parabolic a sudden jump anywhere on bending moment diagram of a beam is caused by answer is a couple acting at the point in a simple supported beam 
having length L and subjected to a concentrated load W at midpoint. So out of these options, the answer is A. Maximum bending moment is equal to WL by 4 at midpoint. In a simply supported beam subjected to a uniformly distributed load W over the entire length L, total load is equal to W and maximum bending moment is, answer is A, that is WL by H. In a cantilever subjected to a concentrated load W at the free end and having length L, Maximum bending moment is so answer is B WL at the fixed end is correct. At a point in a simply supported or overhanging beam where shear force changes sign and is equal to zero, then bending moment is answer is A maximum because bending moment becomes maximum at point where shear force becomes zero. That's because SF is equal to zero, which implies bending moment is maximum in case of simply supported beam. In a cantilever subjected to a combination of concentrated load uniformly distributed load and uniformly varying load maximum bending moment is answer C at the fixed end at the fixed end the bending moment is always maximum whereas at free end it is zero point of contraflexor is Answer is D, point where bending moment is equal to zero but changes its sign from positive to negative. Point of contraflexor is also called point of inflection. Point of contraflexor is a point where the curvature of the beam changes its sign. It is sometimes referred to as the point of inflection. Next, torsion and bending. A shaft is said to be in pure torsion if the answer is C to opposite turning moments are applied to the shaft if a material is subjected to a twisting by application of couple a shear, shear shear stress will be induced within the material if a couple is applied to a cylindrical rod in which or in such a way that the axis of the couple is coincident with the axis of the rod then the rod is said to be under pure torsion. In power transmission equation, that is P is equal to rho pi and T divided by 60 into 1000. So we have to see which option is correct. The answer D is correct. P is in kilowatt and T is the mean torque. Always T in this formula represents the mean torque. Which property is not required for the shaft material? Which property is not required for the shaft material? That is D, good castability. Which material is suitable for shaft material? The answer is D, again, steel having approximately 0.4% carbon and 0.8% of manganese.
if diameter of the shaft is doubled, the power transmitted capacity will be either twice or half, four times, eight times, or say it is C, eight times. Theoretically, it can be proved. Two shafts in torsion will have equal strength if answer is D. Only torque transmitting capacity of the shaft is same. Strength will be same if torque transmitting capacity is same. Which of the following is not designed under torsion equation? Spindle, axle, low cost shaft, shaft with variable diameter. The answer is B, axle. Which of the following is incorrect? Answer is A. In torsion equation, we use mean torque. Mathematically, torque is a rate of change of angular momentum. Hence, we consider mean of that. Which of the following is incorrect? The answer is B. In a solid shaft, maximum shear stress occurs at the center. The following option is which following option is correct? The answer is B. There is advantage in transmitting power at high speeds. Which of the machine component is designed under bending stress? Shaft, arm of a lever, key, belts and ropes. Answer is A. When shaft is subjected to a combined loading, the design is usually based on maximum shear stress theory. Since the shafts are usually made up of ductile materials. When two dissimilar shafts are connected together, then the shaft is the answer is B composite shafts. When a shaft is subjected to a pure twisting, then the type of stress developed is bending, axial, shear, normal. Answer is C shear. Shear stress is produced when the shaft is subjected to a pure twisting. The torque which produces unit twist per unit length is torsional rigidity. The product of shear modulus and polar moment of inertia is called torsional rigidity. The SI unit for torsion is Newton meter, that is answer is A. What is moment of inertia, MOI? Answer is C, it is product of A into R square where A is the area, R is the distance and uh, in other options we have mass and the length but the correct answer is C, A into R square. Point where the total volume of the body is assumed to be concentrated is, the answer is B, centroid of volume. That is a center point where the entire weight or mass is considered to be concentrated.
What is the moment of inertia of a circular section? The answer is A, pi d to the power 4 divided by 64. What is the moment of inertia of a rectangular section about an horizontal axis through CG? The answer is D, B d cube by 12. The point through which the whole weight of the body acts is called answer is B, center of gravity. The center of gravity of a body is the point through which the whole weight of the body acts. The point at which the total area of a plane figure is assumed to be concentrated is called Answer is A, centroid. Centroid is the point at which the total area of a plane figure is assumed to be concentrated. What is the polar modulus of for a solid shaft? The answer is C, pi divided by 16 d cube. Thank you.